Hey, how you doing? This is Tony, and welcome to Finding Subjects Podcast. What's going on in your life? Hopefully everything's going well. We didn't get an opportunity to record this Saturday, so today's subject is going to be uh, something that I learned yesterday about my faith. It was something we talked about, and you might be saying, ah, time to, time to sh- shut this guy off. I'm not listening to this dude talk about faith. Well, that's okay. <laughs> I'll catch you next week, man. Later. <laughs> uh, are you ever in the presence of God? Well, I was thinking about this yesterday as we had uh, church service, and um, I'm going to kind of like use their outline for what they were talking about because it was pretty interesting. You know, we we resemble what we revere. It's basically what the, the what we were talking about. Um, and it was interesting because how many of us actually uh, – concentrate on being the in the presence of God, just a passion for pleasing God each and every day. Um, show animated humility towards God and live a life uh, shaped by God's word. And then how many of us actually have true worship void of idols, right? Like an idol can be something that we just worship and obsess with and concentrate on all the time. It could be anything. And so, you know, it's kind of like when the pastor was saying, is it, you know, talking about the presence of God, what's that mean to you? What's it mean to me? What it means to me, excuse me, is the word, there's one word that pops up in my head, and that is accountability. Because with all of these things, to be in the presence of God, you got to kind of be accountable of your own actions and your own self. Um, I'm talking about this because I think it's important. I live my life that way and I'm full of mistakes all day long. I make mistakes, right? Always have, right? But I was always aware from just a really young age, like, you know, to try to be in the presence of God. Like, why are we here? What, how did I get here? The whole concept of God period. And then how difficult it is to live. First of all, number one, a God-like life, because that's absolutely impossible, right? To be perfect, But just be conscious of God all the time, which basically is being in the presence of God and and answering for your actions, right? So this accountability word just popped in my head when pastor's talking about this. I'm like, man, man, I mean, really comes down to it. We got to be accountable of what we're doing. We got to be accountable of our words, our our actions, the way we treat one another. And then I thought about the segue a little away from that is, you know, in our lives, how difficult that is today to do that. It's nearly impossible sometimes because this world has such a heavy duty influence on our actions, on our minds, our words, like right now, like what we're watching on in the news, how easy it is to feel hatred towards one another. And, uh, how does that bring favor to God? right? A pleasing favor to God. It's tough. It's hard to do. And so I was thinking about that. And, um, some of the takeaways that we had from yesterday were pleasing God brings favor to God. Another one is, uh, there is something about animated humility that softens the heart of God and opens our lives to him. Basically just being extremely mindful of something that you've done wrong, being passionate about uh, your sorrow towards that and asking God for help in that. The other thing was reading God's word matters and it is something we should not neglect. That's the last one. Idols must go. How can you have idols before God, right? You might say, well, I don't. Well, we got to look close into our lives and see what really is important, see what occupies our mind and how often God occupies your mind in your life. Isn't it something that if you believe in God, right? And that's God, your creator, God is everything, the I am. And how much time do we actually spend in worship? How much time do we actually spend in the presence of God? Like thinking about how to please God. Are you living your life accordingly? Are you being a good person? 
Would God be happy with that? Being in the presence of God. What's it take? It takes a lot more than 60 minutes on a Sunday. Right? It's amazing when we think about that. How much time we don't spend thinking about being in the presence of God. So just a, a point that he, he just, many points that he brought up yesterday to pastor. It was, uh, it was just kind of cool. And it was you know, the, the one sentence that he said was, uh, we reflect what we revere. We become what we worship. And that could be so many different things. I'm real happy with this church. I'm really happy with this pastor. He's a good guy. Um, he's eye-opening. The things he says, he makes me think. I can relate to him big time. Another thing he said yesterday was being judgmental or critical instead of passionate and pleasing for God. How many of us are guilty of that all day long? It's fascinating. And then he says, how many of us ask God to please use me in his moment whenever he wants me? Surrender, basically. I'll put the notes away. I mean, that's a prayer I say every morning I wake up. Dear God, please use me as you need me. Please don't let me live a slothful and meaningless life. Put me where you need me. I've been praying, praying that since I, I can't even remember. That bothers me. I've talked to people about it. It bothers me. It's something that haunts me all the time. It's in my heart that I need to check in constantly. Am I doing what you want me to do? When I was younger and being an idiot and running around and doing stupid stuff, was that what you really wanted me to do? Probably not. But all those things, don't they make us who we are today? We learn from that. So yet, even today, I ask every single day, are you using me for what you need me to do? I don't know what you want me to do. Sometimes I sit here in this microphone and I just like look at these sound waves, which are kind of cool, by the way. You know, different frequencies that it's recording at, the different levels, and, you know, have the ability to speak and form words in a sentence. And each and every word I'm looking at, and you might say, dude, you are, like, gone. But I am so grateful and feel so blessed that I have the ability to speak and to form a sentence and words that can communicate with people all around the world. It's what we do here. A lot of times it's goofy stuff, which is cool. I love to laugh, man. Whatever we can do to, to laugh and make each other, you know, smile a little bit, I'm all I'm down for that all day long. And then there's times like this where I sit here. I don't have anything in front of me other than my notes from the last three or four weeks of going to church. Just looking at that stuff and thinking about it. Accountability. There it is again, that word. Being accountable for my life. Being accountable for my actions. And there are people saying right now, are you kidding me, dude? Like, what are you doing? Like, why are you putting that much pressure on yourself? Like, lighten up about it. Okay. But that's the way I live my life. Because I am aware of how fragile my life truly is. And I feel as if I have been given and been blessed with the ability to still, still be here. That... I haven't been taken early. I remember just, you know, finding out the news for me and then am I going to be around? And just two, three weeks ago, something I prayed for for so many years is to be there for my daughter's wedding, man, to walk her down the aisle. Prayer answered. And then I had to do the father of the bride speech. What can I say? So much I want to say. I had plans. I had plans to do these speeches and things to say, but the only words of advice I could think of that were haunting me and just shouting in my head to everybody there, not just to my, my daughter and her new husband, 
when you encounter problems in life, pray about it. Pray about it. I had notes, even though people think I didn't have notes. I had some like, you know, like little points that I had to hit, right? Little bullet points. I was overwhelmed by the two words, pray about it. Because if I only had two words left and someone had to say, I need advice. What are your last two words to me? I'd be like, pray about it. (laughs) If I could go back in time and meet my young self, self, pray about it, dude. Pray about it. Yeah, I check myself every day. I I don't know. (laughs) I pray about it. I don't know what God wants from me. I don't know. I get up and I feel a responsibility to be a responsible human being, to be cool to everybody, to listen to people, to talk to people. And I pray and hope that I'm doing a good job at that. When I leave a conversation with somebody, I hope I make a positive impact. And if they take the time to find out about me or ask about me or you know who I am and what I'm all about, I hope that they see dude's faith-based. He means well. He means good. He's not that kind of person that will, you know, push his faith down your throat. And there will be people that will say, yeah, well, you should be Tony. You know, you should be uh, the fisher of men, sowing seeds and reaping. I'm not good at that. I'm good at being me and being honest. I don't play games. I tell it like it is. That's called sometimes, you know, wearing your emotions on your sleeve in that way. Very passionate person that comes from my, who I am as a, you know, from my family, from my blood. We are passionate people on both sides. Be straight up with people. Be honest. And pray about it. Pray about your life. Pray about things that are going wrong. Pray about people that you know and care about and love. Pray about people that you might not even know that help them get through things. Does God answer our prayers? I believe God has answered every prayer that I ever made. Not always the answer that I wanted. And then you think back and you're like, well, was that for the better? I mean, what do you want to think? No, it was for the worst, huh? (laughs) Like if you... If you go through life, well, you didn't answer that prayer. Oh, man, did I get shafted on that one? Look how life could have been. I choose not to because I love my life. I love my life. I play anybody else play this $1.5 billion? Billion? I played it. And there's this weird part of me that's like, I don't want that. I don't want that. I love my life. I'm happy. Sure, we can all use a little bit more cash, but that's not going to substitute for happiness, man. You could say, well, it's going to make it a lot more fun. Sure, maybe, temporarily. I know very rich people. I have friends that are very rich people. That's not everything. Gives you new worries, folks. And when you get crazy money like $1.5 billion, now you're checking everybody. You're like, why, why are these people here? Why is that person hanging around me now? Why is that person being nice to me? What do you want? I don't have to worry about any of that now. I got nothing. <laughs> That's the beauty about like getting knocked down way back, having nothing and being in need. And you sit back. It's a blessing. Because, man, you see everything. You know who cares. You know who truly cares about your finances, excuse me, how they wish to help you. Tell you, man, an adversity like that is a beautiful thing in a way. And you could say, well, you're out of your mind again. It's a blessing because it clears the air, takes all doubt away. You find out where people are truly coming from. So 
Again, I wake up every day. This is what I pray for. Please use me as you need me. Please put me where you need me. And please uh, don't let me get to the end of my life and feel as if I neglected the gifts that you've given me. The true nature of what I'm supposed to be doing here. And maybe that's just doing this. I love doing this. I love just talking to people. Like to me, if there's one person out there, like, I get this guy, you know, or yeah, I get that. It's worth it. I see other podcasts. It's so disturbing sometimes when I see some of these podcasts. Like, I'll tell you right now, you want to know how to become a a really (laughs) popular podcast? Just be an idiot. (laughs) I'm telling you. Like, if I made a podcast when I was a kid, it would probably be famous. (laughs) It'd be all over the place. Because we could be idiots, and we were good at it. Talk about normal things. Talk about, I don't know, being good. Not using any bad language. It's, it's I don't know. It doesn't have any shock value to it. It don't matter to me. It goes back a long time ago when somebody asked me, how many listeners are going to be enough for you? That's a struggle for every podcaster out there. Big struggle. They're all looking at the numbers. I don't care. I don't look at the numbers. I'm happy occasionally when I glance at them and say, you know what? That's that's working. And and what are the the rewards that you reap? Nothing. <laughs> Other than accountability. Right? Go back to that word again. And in my head, maybe I feel as if by sharing my faith just a little bit or sharing the conversations that Bink and Bob and I have, joking around, making somebody laugh that gives them a little reprieve from something that they might be trying to uh, escape from or need help in. And so in everything, anybody, if they'd ask me, man, I'm stuck, what do I do? If I don't have the answers or even if I had the answers, probably one of the first things I'm going to tell you is pray about it. And I feel as if that's not just uh, two words that are meaningless because I learned a hard way and a good way that when you truly put your heart into it, when you sincerely surrender yourself, man, some beautiful things happen. And some of you may say, maybe that's just a change of a state of mind. And that's a beautiful thing. Thank God for that to look at your life and look at your adversities and say, you know what? I've been blessed with that adversity instead of like, Oh, it's a curse. Woe is me. What kind of option is that? Just surrender to it. Then you embrace it, man. That is if you, you know, if you, if it's something that you have no ability to change, then embrace it and, and own it. You own it. And you ride it out. If it's something that you need to change and you have the fear that you can't change it, you pray on that too, that you have the courage to change that. But truly, I will tell you, for me, prayer has only blessed me. Prayer has given me that dialogue. When I say prayer, that dialogue with God, man, it's changed my life. It was always there. But then when it got real and real serious, It was just amazing how it helped me. So uh, that's it. A little quickie. I hope you don't mind that type of stuff, just me being straight up with you and about that. You have a problem in life. We all got problems, man, but there's some serious problems happening out there and you feel as if you're helpless to help out. Pray about it. I remember seeing a a guy down in Ocean City, New Jersey, extremely wealthy man, a big time real estate owner down there. I'm not going to get any more detailed than that. I'm talking big time. He's driving a brand new limousine, excuse me, brand new Mercedes Benz and he pulls up and, uh, I, you know, at that time, at that moment, you know, I didn't know where next week's, you know, food money was coming from. 
how we want to pay our mortgage, anything. This guy's got a bumper sticker on the back of his Mercedes. And it said, pray the rosary. (laughs) I'm like, what? It's the last thing I thought I'd see on the back of a brand new Mercedes Benz. Imagine that, putting a bumper sticker on a brand new Mercedes Benz. So you know me. I'm like, yeah, I got to find out what this guy's all about. Walk right up. Hey, how you doing? Hey, how you? He kind of seemed in a hurry. I said, can, I, can you give me one, 10 seconds here? I just have a question for you. I said, this bumper sticker on your brand new Mercedes. He says, well, I wouldn't have that brand new Mercedes if I didn't pray all the time. Because the things that have happened in my life, that prayer has got me through. And I just nodded to him. He goes, yeah. And I said to him, yeah. I said, you know, normally you wouldn't see anybody putting a a bumper sticker on a brand new Mercedes. And he says, well, you know, that's who I am and that is my faith. And that's what I believe. And prayer made all the difference in the world to me. And I said, I thanked him and that was it. It was just, it was incredible. All right, that's all I got, really. Have a fantastic day. Will I put this up? There's always that question. I hope to share it. Hopefully you like it. Hopefully it don't turn you off. But again, um, it is what it is, and maybe it'll matter to you. All right. I'm going to cut this here. Thanks for everything. Thanks for being here. Thanks for listening. And uh, we'll, we're going to record as soon as we can, man. It's just been schedule conflicts with everybody. So uh, until then, thanks for listening to this portion of Finding Subjects. And uh, hopefully the uh, the numbered recordings that I do with Bob and Bink will get back busy real, real soon. But uh, until then, you take care of yourself. This is Tony. And thank you for listening to Finding Subjects Podcast. See you. Peace.